Coming up on the next Evening Magazine, Australia's rugged outback can also be tropical. It's filled with Aborigines history and art. Saddle up, we're taking you there. I'm Megan Black. Join us for Undiscovered Australia, coming up right after the news. We're exploring Australia's outback. I'm Megan Black. Evening Magazine starts now. Join us in the middle of nowhere as we explore the outback of undiscovered Australia. Who needs cars when you can go camelback? How do you steer it? The unique way to get around Alice Springs. Meet a real life crocodile Dundee. Okay, so you put him in your mouth. Mm -hmm. Okay, mm -hmm. come on. Mm -hmm. Who convinces Kim Holcomb to do the unthinkable? Meet the Aboriginal guide who gave Oprah a tour of this ancient land. And from Tacoma, for millions, he's an icon of peace. Now, Desmond Tutu is making his final visit to the U.S., where you can see him speak tomorrow. It's Evening Magazine for Thursday, May 12th. Hi and welcome to Evening Magazine's Undiscovered Australia. Tonight we're exploring the outback at Litchfield National Park. Look at these Wangai Falls. Absolutely stunning as is this entire park. Now look around. We are in the outback. It's not all harsh, dry and desert like. Here in the Northern Territories, it's tropical. Litchfield National Park is absolutely gorgeous, particularly here in the wet season, which is during our winter months, the Australian summer. We're going to show you around this park throughout the show tonight, but first we're heading south to the heart of Australia, the Red Centre. Alice Springs is the largest town in that area, and it's also where you can experience the bush and the outback in a most unusual way, on a camel. The sight can be startling. Camels, home on the range where cattle and kangaroo roam. But for Marcus Williams, it's all in a day's work. They're great business partners. Camels are very hard working and they're forgiving animals. They, um, they put up with me. <laughs> Together, Marcus and his four-legged workmates operate Pindon Camel Tracks, a sightseeing company in Alice Springs. I do take visitors to Central Australia for one hour camel rides and without these camels I'd be washing pots and pans in the back of a restaurant in town. <laughs> the camels he appreciates so much are one humped camels common in Australia. They were brought to the country in the 1840s to help explorers travel the desert. Now Australia is home to the largest population of wild camels in the world. One saddled camel. When tamed, they're dependable pack animals that can walk days without water. And for short distances, they can run fast. Every July, the town of Alice Springs hosts the Camel Cup, a popular event where animal and rider race at speeds of 40 miles per hour. For members of Marcus's herd, it's just not their style. My camels work hard enough here for me already. I don't need to sort of put them into that sort of stressful situation for a day. One of his camels, named Greyhound, used to race. The kissing camel. Come over, introduce you to him. Now he's enjoying retirement and a slower paced life with Marcus. This tender moment. No tongue. <laughs> <laughs> is followed by an afternoon tour. Good afternoon, everybody. Left foot. Oh, no. Oh, really? back oh. That shows tourists the Australian outback. How do you steer it? From a saddle seven feet high. Oh, it's awesome. You're really high. <laughs> Gives you a great view of the landscape that you're walking through. It's, it's quite comfortable. It ain't bad at all. <laughs> but they are taller than what I thought. I'm scared of heights. People say, oh, should we just sit up straight and hold on tight? And I say, no, just swing your hips. <laughs> just rock with the camel. Hush, hush. When Marcus talks to his animals, hush, hush. they listen. Where he leads, they follow. But don't expect him to communicate with people in the same way. Once on the trail, Marcus is a man of few words. Hello, America. When people ask me questions, I answer them truthfully. If people don't ask me questions, then I just sit there quietly. Out here, silence is golden. And for Marcus, something to be appreciated when surrounded by nature. 
and the company of his camels. I just want people to sort of sit back and enjoy the, um, the quietness, you know, to listen to the birds, to, um, to observe the, the way that a camel walks and to feel the camel breathing in and out. And um, yeah, and just a, yeah, it's just a nice leisurely walk. Marcus offers three camel rides a day. Now on most outings, you can expect to see kangaroos and maybe even the occasional herd of Australian cattle. The rides cost about $45 per rider. Now here at Litchfield National Park, all kinds of beautiful natural wonders, including these gorgeous falls. Don't you just love that sound? There are nine different falls. Some are only accessible during the dry season, which would be our summer months. But I got to tell you, the wet season is the time to see them because that's when the water is gushing at its highest. Coming up, a real life crocodile Dundee who swears the cure for a common cold is eating ants. And later from Tacoma, an exclusive interview with Nobel Peace Prize winner Desmond Tutu. Welcome back to Evening Magazine from Australia's Northern Territory tonight. We are exploring the outback at Litchfield National Park. Now, Northern Australia and Litchfield have something you will not see anywhere else in this world. Take a look behind me. What are those, you ask? Magnetic termite mounds. Yes, you heard me correctly. Termites build these mounds magnetically aligned north and south to protect themselves from the scorching sun. Many are roughly six, six and a half feet tall, but can be much larger as well. Unlike the termites we're used to, these don't eat wood, but grass. In fact, termites eat more grass than all other grazing animals combined. It's a pretty awesome sight as well. Well, even though it is a tourist attraction, make no mistake about it, the outback can be treacherous and you have to be prepared. Well, tonight, Kim Holcomb introduces us to a guide who's as authentic Australian as they come. You could venture into Australia's outback with only a compass, but you'd miss out on the character. What's with not letting me carry the tripod? You're a lady. He won't let me carry the tripod. You don't do that in Australia. It's futile to argue with Sab Lord, a skilled guide, interpreter, and driver who knows all the back roads to all the right places. For bird watching, it's Fog Dam. You know, to see something like this, and I do travel a lot, for me, it, it's, it's magnificent, you know. There's a, a forest kingfisher. See him in the tree there? Sab identified all the species and advised me to stay on this side of the car since a 13-foot crocodile lives on the other side. And they've been trying to catch him for two years. I didn't need to be told twice. I followed him on into one of Kakadu National Park's most stunning sites, Norlangi Rock. There's a lot of art. Just in Kakadu alone, there's probably around about 7,000 sites. Ancient art galleries are around every turn. They estimate that Aboriginal people have been visiting this area for at least 20,000 years. Sab is a historian one moment and a naturalist the next. Now, this is a die. It's just like us putting varnish or that onto um, our wooden couches or something like that. Growing up on a remote homestead, he learned all of nature's tricks. So when you rip it off, put water, and it'll actually foam up completely and, and, and wash your hands completely white. I gotta admit to being impressed. And something about seeing yeah, this world through like. his eyes Much. made it even more vivid, which may explain how Sab Lord convinced me to do the unthinkable. Okay, here we are. This is green ants, okay? Now, Kim, this is very, very good for sore throats, colds. In 21 years, I've never had a day off. You actually suck them. So what you do is, you crush them up a bit like that. And you see that? Oh, God. Like this, and you get them in your... Okay, so you put them in your mouth. Mm -hmm. Okay, mm -hmm. come on. Mm -hmm. And then what, then you eat them? So then you look for a girl and you give her a kiss, okay? Because it's very limp. Come on. Come on. They're still crawling. Oh, yeah, of course they are. Come no, on. No, you said you'd crush them. Oh, gosh. I don't know if I can do it. Here you go. Come on. <laughs> Good girl. Come on. You've got to do it for me here in Australia. Now put it in your mouth. That's a girl. 
Can I spit it out now? Yeah. Cut. <laughs> I'm a genuine Australian now, right? Now, before Sab became a tour guide, he worked a buffalo ranch and played professional rugby. Let me tell you, no shortage of stories when he is your guide. We will put information about his company on our website. Up next, a story 50,000 years old reveals what really happened at Australia's Ayers Rock. And from Seattle, how a famous African archbishop hopes to strengthen the community in Tacoma.